Hi friends, uh, I'm coming to you live uh, from here in Warsaw, uh, less than 100 meters from where I live, from by one of the remaining walls of the Warsaw Ghetto. This wall behind me would have been an external wall, and behind that would have been an area of uh, the Warsaw Ghetto, the most famous of all the ghettos, the ghettos that all of us have heard about and know about. And I'm coming to you today, especially on the eve of Passover. Tonight, Jews all around the world will celebrate the Jewish holiday of Passover. A holiday that all of us know, a holiday that me personally, I'll be spending for the first time alone. And I know a lot of others will as well. A lot of people watching this in Israel, in America, in the United Kingdom, wherever you may be, a lot of people will be watching this by themselves, watching this going into the holiday of Passover alone, or with close families, making sure not to travel, social distancing and so on and so forth and it's not an easy time for any of us it's a difficult time in fact for me it's a really strange experience a very strange experience to spend my fast first Passover my first Seder night the first evening of Pesach completely alone and really this is something that that I'm I wouldn't say struggling with but it's not an easy experience as it isn't for a lot of people either but often in life sometimes all we really need is perspective and from my perspective and from my personal point of view where i'm standing now gives me more perspective than anything else i'm standing here as i said before by the external wall one of the few remaining walls of the warsaw ghetto 77 years ago on this very day in the hebrew calendar would have been the 18th of April 1943 but the Hebrew calendar would have been today started what would later come to be known as the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising it started a little bit beforehand but the crux happened now by 18 by April 1943 the German Nazis had really pushed and had got to the height of what was the final solution in this ghetto behind me this tiny area 2.5% of Warsaw. At its peak, 460,000 Jews were rounded up and pushed into this area. At its peak, 9.2% 9.2 people in each room. Imagine that. Each tiny room. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in this cramped place. Up to 460,000 people. But on April the 18th, 1943 was when the last Seder night took place in the Warsaw Ghetto. By that point, we'd already been a few years in the ghetto. The Jews had been in this area for quite a long time. An entire year earlier, Adam Chelniakov, the head of the Judenrat, the head of the Jewish police inside of the ghetto, committed suicide to be in a position where he wasn't deciding about who would live and who would die. And throughout almost that entire year, between five to 6,000 Jews were transported every single day to the German Nazi death camp of Treblinka and to others, where they were ultimately killed. But on the 18th of January 1943, three months prior, there was a huge roundup. The German Nazis rounded up 8,000, and the Jews inside the ghetto fought up and stopped that transport taking place. The Germans then realized that something was going to happen, and this is when they started to gather their forces, and it all really came to, to its ultimate destruction on the 18th of April 1943, exactly 77 years ago today to the Jewish calendar. And it was the eve of Pesach. Again, Passover is a remarkable Jewish holiday. It's a holiday spent with families, spent with love. It's, a spa, it's the holiday where we talk about our exodus from Egypt, where we come together as families and the children sing songs and the parents answer, and we spend this time together as families. And imagine the fear just behind us 77 years ago in Warsaw Ghetto. But regardless, the Seder night took place. Some of the Jews were on the roofs of building looking down to see if the German Nazis were coming or not. But regardless, Seder night took place. And there are many stories of those who survived who tell of this Seder night, who tell of this evening where we came together where Jews came together for the final time in the Warsaw Ghetto to celebrate Passover. One of the people who was known most in this period was Rabbi Meisel, who was a 60-year-old rabbi inside of the Warsaw Ghetto. And he held a Seder night 
that according to survivors lasted the whole evening. With songs, somehow they smuggled matzot, matzahs, the small unleavened bread that Jews eat in this period inside of the ghetto, and they managed to hold this Seder night. For them, the opportunity to have a Passover was something that they were refusing to miss. And at the end of the Seder night, Rabbi Maizel, 77 years ago tonight, understood what was going to happen and said, now is a good time to die. I've celebrated Passover. I've done the mitzvah. And sadly, later that evening, he died by the hands of the German Nazis in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. But there's also another incredible story, the story of 12-year-old Itzik Milchberg. Itzik Milchberg was a young man, a young boy, who would take a wall like this from the ghetto, he'd smuggle out through different areas, probably not this wall, other areas, wherever it was, and he'd smuggle in and out of the ghetto. He'd be able to bring products, he was selling cigarettes on the other side, on the Aryan side, as a way to stay alive. And Itzik smuggled himself back into the ghetto. Back into the ghetto so he could celebrate Passover. Itzik said that there was no way that he wouldn't be together with those he could be on Passover evening. And Itzik saw his uncle Fivel. And his uncle Fivel said to him, Ilvet, feel the Seder mit mir. Good that you'll celebrate the Seder with us. And his uncle also turned to him at the end of this Passover Seder and he said to him, you may die. But if you die, you'll die as a Jew. And if you live, you'll live as a Jew. And if you do live, tell your children and grandchildren what happened this evening. Tell your children and grandchildren what happened here. Itzik was later caught and he was put on a train to Treblinka concentration camp, the German Nazi camp, where ultimately over a quarter of a million Jews were killed, were taken from the Warsaw Ghetto to there and killed, many from other places as well. He jumped from the train on the way to Treblinka. He was saved by Poles, by Catholic Poles, and survived the war, and this is how his story was told. But really, again, being here and hearing these stories and understanding what took place 77 years ago, only 77 years ago, when we were trapped as a people, we were exterminated as a people, to celebrate Seder night alone, suddenly it doesn't seem so bad. To celebrate Seder, as we say, as free men, with thank God our country, with the state of Israel, with the freedom to be around the world as free Jews, as free people. This is the beauty of celebrating Passover and even during these difficult times. So really, to be here, again, is not an easy thing. I'm here in Poland at the moment. It was important for me that I stayed in Poland, that I was able to continue the work of the foundation in helping the righteous amongst the nations. And we've been very successful in doing so, thank God, because of the help of many, many good people watching this and others who have joined in and enabled us to, to do the work that we're doing. And we're grateful and thankful to all of you because even here, the continual work that we're undertaking as a foundation needs to take place and continue. Just as Itzik Milchberg, this 12-year-old boy who survived the last Seder night of the Warsaw Ghetto 70, 77 years ago, was saved, so too is our opportunity to stand up and do what is right now and make sure we're there to help and give assistance and do all we can to be good to those who were good to us during that period, which is again why my foundation from the depths is continuing to push and work and make sure even now it's one o'clock in the afternoon Soon I'm going to be going and dropping off some more packages to Righteous Amongst the Nations to make sure they have everything. On Friday, once again, we're doing a big drive with a local restaurant here in Warsaw. We're going to be cooking and providing food for everyone and everything that they need for the Easter holiday that's coming up on Sunday. And doing everything that we can to make sure this continues. But again, it's sites like this that give us perspective and understanding and give us the opportunity to realize that it's not that bad. This will pass, it's an issue of time. The coronavirus won't stay forever. So for me here in Warsaw, just before I go, 
I'm going to light a candle, which is tradition, uh, which is a typical Jewish tradition that we do on a yurt site on the day of a death. This evening I won't be able to light a candle because of the Jewish festival. So in honor of that, and in honor of all of you who are watching me, and on behalf of everybody who are watching me, and from all of us around the world, I'm going to light a candle now in memory of Rabbi Meisel and the others who were murdered this evening after Seder night, after celebrating the last Seder in the Warsaw Ghetto. On behalf of all of us, I'll light the candle. I'll spend a moment of silence. And I wish you all a happy and a healthy Passover. I hope that all of us take this Passover and this is the last Passover that we have by ourselves, without our families. For me, it's tremendously hard to be without my wonderful daughters. We were meant to be in London with my grandmother, celebrating all of us together, this beautiful Jewish tradition, this continuous tradition of Pesach, as was celebrated every year. However, this is the situation, and with that situation, we will make the best of it and do everything that we can to continue. So again, I'm going to light this candle on behalf of every single one of us watching in memory of those murdered in the Warsaw Ghetto on the eve of Pesach, the final Seder night, 77 years ago. the sad part over, once again I wish you all a Chag Kasher V'Sameach, a happy and a healthy Passover and especially a healthy Passover, full of love and light and I hope that everybody makes the best of it with all the family surrounding you or even if you're by yourself. For me here in Warsaw, bye bye.